Welcome back to the Geelong Cricket Show. And yes, Mr Duck is speaking. Congratulations to Russell Mitchell. Second ball, middle stump for the two Blues second 11 last weekend. Congratulations, Russell. You're the first Duck Award of the season on the Geelong Cricket Show. So we turn our attention to the world of Ballarine Peninsula Cricket Association. And what better game to start off with than the grand final replay from last season where it is Colandina taking on Bowen Heads. I've got two Bowen Heads guys sitting at the table, so I'll have to stick up for Colandina. But first of all, Tim, your unparochial thoughts on this game. Well, Colandina are a side that are in fantastic form, and it goes to without saying that Cade Norkey's one of the huge keys to their side. He's got already got a 50 and 124 he made last game against Jan Juck. So he's a really key wicket for Bowen Heads. If they can see him off early, then it might be a chance to really uh, get into that Colandina middle order and try and expose them. But then they've got a lot of talent in there too with a guy like uh, Will Handley playing. Michael Fabre is expected to be back for this one as well after playing in the uh, Colandina B grade. He's been out with study commitments. So he's another big in for Colandina, one of their real keys with the ball and he'll look to get up in the faces of a few of the Barnheads batsmen. Probably Jason will be one of them pretty early on. But... uh, well, it's going to be a tight one, but still, on the, the uh, form line that the two sides have had, I think Barwon Heads have had the wood over Colin Dendle the last few times, most importantly in the grand final for Barwon Heads, so I will tip a win for the Seagulls. And do you, Jason, why will Barwon Heads repeat their grand final victory over Colin Dina? Well, I think we're pretty evenly matched. We're both pretty strong with bat and ball, but I'll just go with a few obvious things. I, obviously, we're going to have to take early wickets and put pressure on their middle order, and obviously Sammy and I know we'll put pressure on ourselves to really... Uh, protect our middle order as long as we can. If we can set that up for a big score, I think we'll be right. Playing at the Bowen Heads Village Oval, does that give you uh, incentive? Yeah, definitely. I think we all love playing at home and uh, we don't have a lot of home games this year and they're all generally, they're all pretty early. So um, we're really keen to make the most of it and put more wins than uh, losses on the board while we're at home. We've got to win their home games, I think. Well, it'll be a great battle between Bowen Heads and Colandina, the grand final replay of Division A of the Ballerine Peninsula Cricket Association and uh, we wish both sides all the very best. In what also will be a fantastic game, Wellington in fourth position on the ladder in A section currently, taking on Anglesey in fifth position. Tim, a real good battle between these two competitive sides. Yeah, it certainly is going to be. Interesting to see how Wallington uh, used that bye week last week. They're coming off some really good form from round one where they did it by 10 wickets against uh, Ocean Grove in a one-day game. So they've got to step in the two-day fixture and obviously adapt to that. They're a side that has uh, some guys that can hang around, though, and that's probably one of the uh, really good things for Wallington this season that you can get a guy like their uh, coach, Darren Cameron, who's uh, known for hanging around for a long time and making big scores by doing that. And they've got a lot of guys who like to play their shots, like Ben Atkinson and guys that can bat around Darren as well. So I think that Wellington side's going to be a lot stronger than a few people would have predicted at the start of the season. They'll be pushing top six, and I think they'll uh, get a win over Anglesey this weekend. Uh, just We'll go to Jason, though, because obviously you played against uh, Anglesey last weekend, got a win up over them. Who do you think uh, will be the favourites for this one between a Wellington and Anglesey? Um, I think Wellington just obviously they've only had two blokes back this year. They haven't lost a wicket, but just um, I think they're a stronger batting side. I think they're really evenly matched in the field. The way they um, not the quickest bowlers going around, but they bowl one side of the wicket and they back it up in the field. But I just think Wellington's a bit stronger with the bat. Barrabool yet to record a win this season. Take on top of the table Port Arlington out at the Barrabool Oval as we're watching footage of the game between Barrabool and Queenscliff. From last weekend. Is that scoreboard looks ugly, doesn't it, Rollo? Six oh. for 62. <laughs> yes, and they wouldn't be too happy. But the Wellington boys are renowned for their fight back. Can they fight back against Port Arlington? Oh, it's going to be an interesting one. I spoke to Barrable's coach, uh, Ben Strawn, a little bit early this week, and he said that his side needs to show a lot more fight at the crease. And the thing is that sometimes, he, and, he, and he probably and he actually admitted it to me, that he thinks a few of their batsmen get drawn in by the short boundaries that are there up at Barrable, and it's something that they have to deal with and take a different mentality in this weekend against the Port Arlington side that have some pretty miserly bowlers. Damien Vassalou was in the wickets last weekend against Newcomb. Uh, Paul McGrath started the year with three wickets as well. So Barrable are going to have to take in the mindset that they're going to really need to bat those 75 overs out. If they can do that, there's definitely enough talent in that side to put together a victory. But on the uh, batting performances that they've shown so far this season, you really can't tip them with any confidence this week. So I'm going to go for Port Arlington to uh, extend their winning run to two wins after the bye in round one. And that Barrable uh, cricket ground, very picturesque up there uh, in the series hills. And it'll be a great game between those two sides. Newcomb, the Newcomb Bulls taking on Jan Juck out at the Irwin Reserve. Jason, your views on this game? 
Uh, I think I think Jan Juck should probably win this one comfortably. Obviously, we all know Newcomb are struggling a little bit, but um, they got some good young fellas out there. They're working really hard, and Price is doing a good job with them. But I just think um, Jan Juck too strong. And in return of Ian Ligo, Tim Mitchell uh, seems to be stabilising the Jan Jack batting lineup. Yeah, it certainly did. He batted well last week for about 40, uh, Ian, and he's obviously one of the big keys uh, to any Jan Juck success. I do think they'll have a win this weekend, but it's a good point that Jason makes about Matthew Price. He's doing some fantastic work out there at Newcomb and putting a lot of faith in the young guys that they do have. So it's really good to see the Bulls backing in their young kids, and uh, some of them are going to be uh, really good performers for the club for not only the next five, but at least the next 10 years because they've got big futures ahead of them. I do think it'll be a win for Jan Juck, though, this weekend. And in the final game, Ocean Grove take on Queenscliff at the Ocean Grove Memorial Reserve. Ocean Grove desperate for a win. Queenscliff wanting to stay in the top five, top six. It should be an interesting game. But, uh, Jason, your thoughts on this one? Well, I think uh, prior to last week, I would have just assumed Queenscliff. But by the sounds of it, Ocean Grove's got a few back in Luke Hardiman and Sean Braniff. Um, But I think I'll go with momentum just because Queenscliff's been settled for a couple of weeks with their side. I think I'll stick with Queenscliff. Uh, Jason, yeah, highlighted a few of the important players that are coming back there for Ocean Grove, Luke Hardham and Sean Braniff, both expected to step back in. David Bate, their captain, also missed last week and he pulled out on Friday night of their game against Drysdale with the, fl- uh, the, uh, with the flu. Dean Gills hasn't been playing either and he's a chance to step straight back into their A grade and stabilise that top order a little bit as well. So on all those inclusions, you think Ocean Grove would have to be a, a lot stronger than they have been for the first couple of weeks. Uh, they were a, a lot better with the bat than they were in round one last weekend with Corey Banfield and uh, Adam Spivey getting run. So there's some confidence building there, but Tim Clark comes back, the coach for Queenscliff, and uh, I think on that, uh, Queenscliff should get another win. Ballerine Peninsula Cricket Association, uh, Division A, there are four unbeaten sides, Port Arlington, Collandina, Drysdale and Wallington. In B grade, two unbeaten sides, Drysdale and Queenscliff. In C grade, Drysdale and Port Arlington. And in D grade, Port Arlington, Queenscliff and Drysdale. Tim, it's a fascinating season already. It certainly is, and it's shaping as one that's going to be extremely tight. Just before we do wrap it up here on the Geelong Cricket Show, we'll uh, throw it to you, Jason. It's going to be an extremely tight season in A grade and one that we're uh, all, all really uh, looking forward to and anticipating. Oh, absolutely. All sides have recruited and strengthened their uh, their orders, and obviously we have four unbeaten sides. It's going to be really tight. Um, and the running premiers, us only having a loss already, I, you know, that throws five in the mix already, I think. It's going to be really tight. If it happens in the world of cricket in Geelong, you'll hear it first here on the Geelong Cricket Show, be it Premier Cricket, Geelong Cricket Association or the Bellarine Peninsula Cricket Association. You have a great day in your chosen game of cricket and or sport, whichever it may be. We'll see you next Saturday morning here on the Geelong Cricket Show. Until then, Rollo saying, catch ya. We are Geelong, the greatest team of all. We are Geelong.